So you want to make a metal casting? Welcome to Composimold Reusable Mold Making. We'll show you how you can make shapes you make yourself into metals such as tin, aluminum, lead, silver, gold, and other metals. Before we begin, most importantly is to be careful and use good judgment. Melted metals are very hot and can severely burn you. The equipment that you will need includes your original shape. We are using a 3D printed eagle, but you can make your original or master object from other materials including plastic, wood, clay, or polymer clay. You can learn more about what you can and can't mold with Composimold or Impressive Putty by getting your free ebook on the Composimold website. You will need your mold make materials either Composimold or Impressive Putty. We will first show you the Composimold, but at the end of this video we will also show you the Impressive Putty. Both are reusable. The composite mold is a heat and pour mold making material that will pick up great details simply by pouring it around your object. For the composite mold, use either the composite mold original or the composite mold flex so you can bend the rubber mold around the wax without causing damage. Also, for the composite mold, you will need to chill your mold prior to pouring in the wax. You cannot use the composite mold for microcrystalline waxes because of the higher temperatures of those waxes. Use the impressive putty if you're going to use a microcrystalline wax. The Impressive Putty is a heat and press mold make material that is extremely easy to make molds with, but it is firmer, so when you're using wax, you may need to cut the mold to remove the wax without breaking it. If you're using composite mold instead of the wax, you will not have this issue, and we'll show you that in another video. That's pretty cool, so watch out for that video. The Impressive Putty can handle higher temperatures, so you do not need to chill the mold first. Other materials you will need to make your metal castings using the lost wax process is a wax. I like beeswax, but you can use a microcrystalline wax with the impressive putty. You can also experiment with many other waxes as well. You also need a metal. We are going to use tin in this demonstration. Higher temperature metals such as steel are unlikely out of the temperature range that you can do in a DIY environment. You also need composite mold plaster. Composite mold plaster contains an additive to make good strong molds in and around the composite mold. You'll need a torch. If you have a high temperature oven, that will work too. Something to hold the metal in. I used a small crucible. Pliers to hold the hot metal. And of course, the safety equipment. Eye protection, hand protection, and body protection. Please, please be careful. Add in some random containers and stir sticks, plus an oven, and a fire extinguisher for safety is also a good idea. Do all of this in a well-ventilated area. So the general steps for metal casting using the lost wax molding process is to make a composite mold mold of your object so you can then make a wax casting so you can then make a disposable plaster mold that can handle the heat of the metal when you pour it in. It's much easier than that sounded, so let's get started. Melt the composite mold in the microwave for about 40 seconds for a small amount like this. Make your rubber mold by pouring your composite mold around your object. To stop this eagle from floating, I could have hot glued it down, but instead I pour a little composite mold into the cup and let that solidify. Then I pour the rest of the composite mold over and around that object. The already cool composite mold holds the eagle in place. I then take this entire mold after I poured the rest of it and I place it back in the refrigerator or freezer to cool it faster. This took about 20 minutes in the freezer to cool to the point where I could take it out of the mold. I pull off the mold box container and pull out the original. Many people like to use Legos to make the mold boxes but in this case a cup worked fine. The composite mold mold is now ready for the wax. I want the mold to be cold when I pour, so while the mold is still cold from being in the freezer, I melted the beeswax and now I pour it into the mold. I let this beeswax cool so it is on the edge of solidifying again before I pour it back into the composite mold mold. The wax will cool from the outside in so it will chill to the correct shape. I carefully remove it from the composite mold mold. If I need to, I can cut up the side of it with a knife here, but because the composite mold is so flexible, I can typically just push it out, which I do in this case. You can also use composite mold to pour into the composite mold mold the same way. I will show you that process in a different video, so subscribe to our channel so you can see it when that video comes out. After the wax has cooled for about 15 minutes, I remove the wax eagle from the composite mold. If I was making beeswax candles, this would be the finished product. 
and it's very nice looking. Fantastic details. Now we make the disposable composite mold plaster mold using the wax. Mix the composite mold plaster with the water at about two and a half parts by weight or volume plaster to one part water. I typically just eyeball it and make it as thick as possible while still being pourable. Place the wax eagle into another mold box or a cup in this case. Pour the plaster around the wax figure and let this solidify for at least an hour. Two hours or even overnight is better. Cut away the mold box to remove the plaster mold from the cup and now comes the lost wax process. It's called the lost wax because we're going to remove the wax from this mold. The eagle wasn't quite on the bottom of the mold so I had to chip away a little bit of the plaster so I had a hole to pour out the wax and a hole to pour in the metal. When I have this hole cleaned up I'm going to flip the mold upside down and melt out the wax. I use a few stones to keep the mold up in the air so that the wax has a place for it to come out. You can reuse the wax as well. I melted out the wax at 350 degrees Fahrenheit in an oven for about 20 minutes. Don't let this wax overheat because it can catch fire. After the wax is removed, continue to warm the plaster to remove more water from the plaster. You also want the mold warm when you pour it in the metal so that there is less temperature difference between the plaster mold and the metal. Now we're finally at the last casting step. You have to melt the metal. The tin can be melted with a butane torch. You may need an insulated oven to melt higher temperature materials such as aluminum. When this is melted, I want to clean off the top of the tin so that there's any less contamination in it. I use a handle of a spoon to just scrape off that top layer. Carefully pour the metal into the plaster mold. Definitely wear eye protection and you should also wear heat protection to your body and hands. The metal can splatter and cause very serious burns. Let the metal cool in the mold. You may want to quench the metal to create a different microstructure in the metal, but I did not need to do this for this material. I let this cool for about one hour. Using a chisel or screwdriver and hammer, break away the plaster and admire your metal casting. In this example, we made the original mold with composite mold reusable mold making materials, but you can also use the reusable impressive putty. Here we show you a quick demonstration of how you use the impressive putty, a higher temperature capable material, to make the wax casting. With impressive putty, you don't have to chill the mold first like we did with the composite mold. And after you have your wax casting, the process is the exact same as what we showed in the previous part of this video. Let me know what questions you have and I'd love to see what you make. Please subscribe for more DIY mold making tutorials and be careful with the metal castings and enjoy.